Okay, I was about to say that like my headset was having a hard time trying to connect with um the uh headphones for some odd reason. But this is to be expected. It is to be expected, but it is it is okay. Why is it not popping up now? What? Is it not connected? It is connected. Why is it not popping up? There we go. There goes the headphones. I need to make sure that I can hear it. You guys can hear it. Um, and we are going to. Ta-da. Um, I got to make sure to have the audio on for the uh, interview we're about to watch. But yeah, as you can see, oh, hold on. Over here. Over here. Uh, so you can download the Uno game and play it while we uh, watch this together. Um, I might as well just um, enable. Um, let me see if I have to. I think I have to refresh this. And my face. Oh, no, my face is not that big. I thought it was big. Okay. Okay, so we're going to refresh it, right? Um, by the way, anybody uh, can ask any questions and stuff like that. Uh, for some reason, this does not want to go. Why? Why is it doing this to me? Do I have to do this? And like, make sure everything is, is right. So by the way, since it is lunchtime and, um, it is, uh, was it Tuesday? How are we doing today? Let me know in chat. Yeah, it's a Tuesday. Um, all right, if this does not work, unless like I am, unless it's wrong. Is it wrong? It is not wrong. Okay. Uh, for the time being, right, so that we can start you know, the show. Um, so, like I was explaining earlier, that um, by clicking on the link to download and uh, basically play um, the Uno game while uh, we listen to this interview, uh, that helps me out directly, that helps the streamer out directly, that helps the content creator out directly. If any of you guys ever uh, was asking your favorite streamer, like, oh, how can I um, help you more directly? That's one way of doing it, uh, is by um, downloading anything that's sponsored. I am completely excited and happy that we are sponsored by Uno. This is one of my favorite games and we'll be able to play it a little bit later. Uh, but for the meantime, while we're listening to this and commenting on it, you guys can play along too and uh, hit those goals. And again, that helps me out directly. Uh, so the link is in the chat. So by all means, if you are uh, lurking, uh, don't uh, hesitate to click the link, play the game while we listen to this. And uh, we'll play it a little bit later. I'll open up some some rooms and stuff like that. Um, Vortex, I am doing well. Um, I feel like, you know, well rested and stuff like that. We're going to have some fun uh, listening to uh, this interview here. Uh, but yeah, uh, like I said, click that link. That link helps me out directly. Um, and I guess uh, let's get going. Let's hope that everything works. Let's hope that everything works. Nope. <laughs> of course it doesn't. Ah. Uh, so, uh, 
listen, this is the reality of being a streamer. Sometimes it, it, you know, it works. Sometimes it misses. Um, because I forget that you have to also put the desktop audio through it. Forward on what's next, but this is what I wanted. I gave up on the idea of working for WWE when I gave up. That's something they wanted to me. When you sign with WWE versus now, it's a huge difference. The first big jump was after my match with Finn Balor. After WrestleMania 40, what was that like? It was emotional. Holding the title in my hand, my entire life flashed. I thought I had regrets. Okay, because it's like super loud in my headset, so, um... That was a really fun match. By the way, that was a really fun match. World Championship at 41. My best years are still ahead. I want to be in the Hall of Fame. I appreciate you making the time. We've been talking about doing this for so long. Yeah, we have. Uh, yeah, it worked out, so. Man. I'm happy to do it. How, how's life? Life looks pretty good for you right now. <laughs> Weird. Yeah? Weirdly cool, though. Um, and I... One second. It feels like it's on, um, on like a speed timer. Um... But I know it's not. Playback speed is normal. For some reason, it felt like it was um, it was going a little too fast. Like most things is everything you want, and you have it, yeah. and then it's like like a kid in a candy store. You don't know what to pick. You don't know what to do with yourself. Uh, it's exciting. Does it feel like at times that it's all coming at you so fast? Yeah, I mean, it has. I could agree with that. Uh, somebody put it in perspective the other day. Um, been on the main roster for three years when you really think about all the stuff that's happened the three years uh this is wild so it's a lot being thrown at me and, and it's he's been on the main roster for three years <laughs> it it feels like it feels like it's more than three years um damn it's been three years a lot can happen in three years a lot can definitely happen in three years. It's one of those things that it's, they say, enjoy the moment. It's kind of hard to when you got to like look forward at what's next and what's next and what's next. You know, every once in a while, I'll, I'll take a breath and look around and I'm like, wow. You know, but it's one of those things that, yeah, it's a lot. Um, but this is what I wanted. How are you able to appreciate the moments when it's fly into a city, do this show, <laughs> fly to the next city, maybe you're home for a few days, then it's, you know, rinse, lather, repeat. Uh, you just got to, like I said, you got to take a breath and really think about it. Even if it's while you're laying in bed or, you know, just on a car ride to the building or on a bus to the next town or whatever it is, look around and really appreciate, you know, this is a different life, something that you couldn't have even envisioned, but you wanted. Um, and those are the, those are the moments that I take to really appreciate it. And, Every now and then it hits me hard, especially like I said when I'm alone, and like I'm, I'm I have a day home uh, off. I, I just really like think about everything and just I'm in awe of everything that's happening around me. Like I, I don't know how this happened, but you know I'm happy it is. You know that night after WrestleMania 40, when you laid in your hotel room in Philly, what was that like? If I'm being honest, I, it was emotional. You know, I, I partied with my friends and family afterwards. We had a celebration. It was a great time. But then when I got back to my room, it was kind of one of those things where I was like, what is this? Like, how, how is this happening? You know? Um, it was great, man. You celebrate it. Holding the title in my hand, looking at it. And just, it was like a, one of those things, like my entire life flashed. You know, everything I had to go through to get to that point. And uh, it was one of those realizations of, I, ha I thought I had regrets. I thought I wish I could do things differently. And then it was one of those things was like, no, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And this is the only way it would have happened. Do things differently. How? If anybody out there saw the, um, the, um, Damien Priest documentary on, uh, Peacock, uh, you know, he did a lot of things differently in order to get his spot at WWE and managed to uh, stay there. And he improved upon himself, uh, which is great. Um, you know, sometimes we get into our own heads. Um, and I know we've all been there at one point or another, um, you know, getting into your own head, getting into your own way and trying to like, you know, stop yourself 
or even like sabotage yourself and you're thinking there with your own thoughts that like you know did you do enough did you do this did you do that uh what happens if you would have took a different route to get to somewhere else um you know all those little what ifs you know um but he doesn't necessarily like have to do that because that documentary basically proved that he was on the right path the whole time by taking in the constructive criticism by improving on his uh, physicality on improving on his storytelling abilities and like what he really truly loves about professional wrestling so like i would say he was on the right path it's just that um someone like him and other creatives and other like wrestlers and you know myself included into that pool can also agree that the mind is like the worst enemy that we have it's not even the trolls online it's not even the hateful comments or whatever it is all of our minds where you know we want to be the best creative in the world we want to be the best at something because we have a true calling for it um so sometimes your brain is like your worst enemy um so i don't think that uh you know he would um think about I don't think he should have thought about any kind of regrets, but no, he's exactly where he needs to be because of his dedication to uh, the business, his dedication to himself, his dedication to his passion and his dedication to like everything that he wanted to do. When you find success later in your life like that, do you feel like there's a point in your life where you're like, oh man, I just feel like this isn't going to happen for me? Of course. I gave up on the idea of working for WWE. Um, you know, I tried multiple times to get in. And in 2017, when, uh, you know, I got an email saying, there's just no nothing for you here. I gave up. And I was just focused on, you know what, let me just live a happy life, and figure it out, you know. And then they called me, which is crazy how that worked. When I gave up, that's when they wanted me. Wow. Um, uh, and it wasn't like I gave up the dream of wrestling. I was still wrestling. This I was, is when I, you were with Ring of Honor, yes, right? Yes, yeah. So I was like, I guess I'll just stay in Ring of Honor. And, you know, I get to wrestle. And that's what I wanted to do anyway. And it's cool. And, you know, they have a, a well, albeit small at the time, but it was still television program. So I was like, hey, I'm on TV. Uh, I'm doing what I wanted to do when I was a kid. I, it's okay. Hmm. You know, and then here we are, you know, WWE. So, yeah, there's many, even in WWE, I, there was many times I looked around and seeing everybody and how people some some of them were progressing faster than others and although it happened still fast for me there were still times that i wasn't sure if it was going to be like that and you know maybe it's cool that i made it but you know this is it you know it's one of those things like i don't know if i belong i don't know if i, I don't know what the future is going to be and not that i gave up but that i did doubt and and i was like ah, i don't think this is going to happen i never thought i was going to be world champ it's so interesting because there's a lot of people that are just like, I'm just happy to be here. Like, I'm happy to be signed. I'm, WWE was my goal, and now I'm here. Then you push that a little bit further, right? You that was me. <laughs> when I went to WWE in 2018, that, that was me. I was happy to be there, but at the same time, like, I, I did the work and whatnot, but then, like, stuff happens. But, yeah, that was me. I could agree to that, that, like, you know, happy to be there, finally achieved the uh, seven-year-old dream that I had. Um, but, yeah. Like, you, you set a goal, right? And to me, I was like, I, I wanted to make it to WWE, and then I made it. Then it was like, well, now I want to be on NXT. Like, I want to be a regular superstar yeah. NXT. I would love to be on NXT. I want a championship. You know, I want this. I want that. Now, actually, I want to get called up, you know? And it, it's just a lot of things like that. Um, but you set short-term goals, but you keep moving forward. And even when you doubt, like I said, like, I, like well, I wasn't sure about things, it didn't mean I stopped and quit i didn't quit i still worked very hard and i still strived for more i just wasn't sure what was going to happen because i was just being realistic but in those moments of self-doubt how do you push it forward from there how do you get through that and get out on the other side of it so i i was never a believer in the power of positivity till i decided to change my life around and when i have those moments of doubt it's like all right well even though you doubt still strive for that because if you even if you don't make it you're gonna encounter a lot of cool stuff on the way on the journey, yeah you know if you put your best foot forward and, and you give it everything you got and you work your ass off for your own dream and your own goals even if you don't make it to the finish line the stuff you're gonna experience and accomplish on that route you're gonna be proud 
I mean, there's yep. no way you're not. So th that's what kept me, you know, pushing. There was that photo that people were posting of you and Gunther before your match at Money in the Bank. And it was a throwback to what you guys look like at the start of your career. Yeah. And then fast forward to what you guys look like now. When you look at that photo of you back then, who is that guy? That's exactly what I asked. I totally misspelled Damien's name. How did, I, how did I think that way? How did I? Hold on. That was my weird, that, that little, uh, I totally misspelled Damien's name. So if Damien sees this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Autocorrect, man. Autocorrect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, pushing. There was that photo that people were posting of you and Gunther before your match at Money in the Bank. And it was a throwback to what you guys look like at the start of your career. Yeah. And then fast forward to what you guys look like now. When you look at that photo of you back then, who is that guy? That's exactly what I asked. Who is that guy? Like, how did I... How did I think that way? How did I think that was okay to be lazy and complacent? and not work your hardest for what you want for your own life. You know what I mean? Like that's true. It, it's wild to me that it, it I, it's like a distant memory of who I used to be. Like, I don't know that person. It was like, to me, it's like I watched a movie of a character, but I don't know that person. Huh. It's hard for me to, to imagine being that way again. Like I, it's, it's like a form of life. What was the thing that changed in your life? It's weird because I don't, like, I remember the day that I made a big decision. I, I quit my job. Um, I, they were offering me more money. Where were you working? I was working a club in Atlantic City. Free apartment, uh, free car. And it, anybody who knows my Hey, Aussie. Anything. So that was everything. Literally everything. Yeah. Uh, that. Hey, Aussie, how's it going? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Morning. Uh, yeah, I, I should be paying attention to uh, Twitch as well uh morning for you and i guess afternoon for me this is mad weird but yeah welcome i had nothing saved nothing and they were like oh we're gonna pay you an actual really good salary keep the apartment keep the car we just need you to stop doing that little wrestling thing you do on the week weekends without hesitation of course like you have my two weeks notice and then they were like oh so if that's how you feel and i was like yeah yeah this is not what i want to do in my life wow walked out of there and then i was like oh my god it's early and you're ready for bed <laughs> uh i came here because there's no video on twitch really there's no video on twitch uh okay that's my weird i'm not even Hold on, I'm not even. It sees that there's video. Um... Uh... You know what? All right, so it is just strictly on YouTube. Oh, streams are fine on your end, Vortex. Oh, well, we're going to continue this on, on, on YouTube. So um, we're going to do that. Uh, Twitch is just a black screen in your most recent video link. I have no idea. I will investigate that like on the, at another time. Uh, I just wanted to get this up and running. Um, yeah. I just wanted to get this up and running. Oh my God. Oh my God. What did I just do? Um, but and immediately just immediately started going to the gym. Um, and then dropped all, all these people that I was surrounding myself with that were basically just telling me what I wanted to hear you know, on the back, you know, just, you're going to be fine. You're good, man. You're six, five, like whatever stupid compliment. And I would be like, yeah, What's wrong with everybody else for not giving me everything, you know? Um, I just dropped all those people, surrounded myself with a different type of mindset. Um, yeah, it was like a whole 360. I mean, I completely turned my life around. Mm. And again, to the power of positivity, I just 
I made a decision. I was like, let me give this a shot. I need something to believe in. Let me try. Even though I, I don't, I, even though I think it's silly, even though I think it doesn't work, it's not real. And it's crazy how it's not that it's power, you know, it's just the, when you don't care about the negative stuff, you keep moving forward instead of, that's like, true. You know, just complaining. Yeah. You just keep working. So yep. more things are going to happen for you. And that's how, that's how I saw it. I was like, oh, wow. Now there's an opportunity. Now there's this door opened. And then that's how I got a, a, a tryout in, in, with the WD in 2014 or 2015. Then that, that's how I got my job in Ring of Honor. You know, like things like that. I just kept on progressing and I lost like uh, almost 200 pounds. I think the biggest thing I want to key in on there is try. And I think there's so many people that are just scared to try because that's true. They might fail. You know, it's it, it, one of the outcomes. Could be, this doesn't work out. But one of the outcomes is could work out. Exactly. And that's the fear, right? Like you're telling me that I tried my hardest. I gave it my all and I failed. I'm worthless. You know, that, I, I think that's what people think. And when I realized that even if you don't make it, it's still cool. Like everything, like I said, like what I was experiencing when the WD told me no in 2017, I wasn't even crut. I was like, okay. You know, like I, I'm happy, you know, like I wasn't like financially set or anything, but I was happy. I was good, like mentally. I was in a good mental place, so I was okay. And then they called me and I was like, to see, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's crazy how things work. Uh, that's why you, that's why you can't stop because at the end of the day, at least you'll be mentally satisfied, you know, like. Nobody can take away my effort. Nobody can say I didn't try. Like, nobody can take that away from me. Oh, my God. I... <laughs> uh, guys, you get to really see me to be a streamer. Uh, oh my god, you get to really see me be a streamer, man. I had muted my microphone so I could watch the video that Aussie had sent me. Um, because I didn't know there's going to be sound and with the new, uh, display, not really display setup of how my mic is, it is kind of like grabbing other outside, uh, um, sound. Uh, so I had my mic off. So listen, if you guys ever want to become a streamer, um, or do videos, uh, you have not made it until like you kept your mic muted, uh, like most streamers do, uh, when you keep your mic muted and then someone in chat, uh, very graciously lets you know that like the audio is gone. You are 100% a streamer at that point or a content creator at that point, man. Like, ah, uh, okay. So like I was saying, Aussie. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sending me the video. Um, I saw what what happened. Um, I currently have Twitch off. So we're just staying on um, on YouTube at this very, very moment. Um, and then once we switch over to playing some Uno, uh, then I'll figure everything out, uh, which I would have to probably like, you know, um, uh, which I would probably have to uh, shut off the stream and then like come back and we'll play Uno um on stream but uh yeah i no longer have twitch on so like i don't know the timestamp of you sending the video but again i'll check it out and i'll investigate it but right now uh we are staying on youtube for uh watching this interview and to uh basically continue on with uh damian priest uh saying that like you know nobody could take away your effort nobody could take away the work that you have done 
in whatever journey that you're going through because it is true that like sometimes like i said earlier that you get into your own head you see other people maybe ahead of you in your journey or whatever it is but you guys got to remember that like in order to be a content creator or in order to be a wrestler or in order to you know whatever your dream is and if anybody wants to like put their dream um are you sent to essentially straight after oh, okay well you know it probably uh yeah I'll, I'll i'll look into it but if anybody in chat that is like you know watching this or whatnot if you have like a time um, a moment if you want to drop in like whatever your dream is just know that your dream and uh someone else's dream are not the same your journeys are not the same just like you know every wrestler that's out there may not have the same goals as uh the next wrestler that they're wrestling on the show you know everyone has something different but it's the effort that they put into their journey that makes it worthwhile. It's the effort that nobody could take it away from them because they are trying. And Damian Priest is completely right. And I wanted to add on to that because it's the same way of like, you know, my dream was to work for WWE and I went to go work for WWE. And I shouted that at the top of my lungs and told everybody who would ever listen to me about like my dream is to work for WWE and I went to go do it and I accomplished it. And then when I say online, on twitter that yeah you know i worked for wwe and if they see me tweet a lot about like wrestling and talking about wrestling and giving constructive criticism and talking about wrestlers and like their favorite wrestlers and their favorite company and if they don't like what i have to say they want to throw the fact that i worked at wwe back in my face as if like that's some type of like the motion is not the word but they throw it back as like they using it as a weapon to throw it back at me. And like, you know, I let that roll off me because I am very proud of making it to WWE. I actually got off my ass to go to like WWE and make that dream come true. While the supposed, um, you know, negative people and the supposed trolls want to do nothing with their life and don't put effort into whatever they want to do. And they get a good feeling about just making people feel like shit on the internet you know um yeah like Aussie said they try to do it as some type of gotcha like oh my god you work for wwe ew you know you must believe in this you must believe in that and it's like no dude it's none of those things you know we all have journeys we all have dreams and to really wrap this whole thing up into like a nice little neat bow don't let people throw the effort that you put forth in your journey the effort that you put forth in whatever you want to make and whatever you want to present to the world don't let people throw that back at you as a gotcha moment or even as like a weapon because they're not doing anything with their lives be happy that you're putting in the effort you know you might not see it at this very moment but when you slow down and look at everything and maybe you have to write something out or type something up for you to see all of your milestones it's going to make you feel like you have done everything that you set out to do and more and nobody could take that away from you and that's what Damien is saying here that like it is the effort that you put through the effort that you know you go make what you want to go make don't let people stop you don't let people be like oh you can't do this you can't do that just tell them to watch you Take that um, inspiration from uh, Liv Morgan where, you know, she uh, she says, watch me. Just do that. You know, um, if you have a dream to be a wrestler, if you have a dream to be in the business, go about it the right way. You know, uh, put your dues in. You know, I don't know. I know people don't really like uh, using the, you know, you got to pay your dues, but you got to start somewhere to get your foot into the door in order to, like, jump off of that and, like, have other doors open for you and i could just tell you that i'm a testament to that to have like multiple doors open and i get to pick whichever one i want um but you know in this sense with damien just to get back to his point make sure you put the effort in and whatever it is that you want to do make sure that you love what you want to do if you don't love it then pivot and find something that you love and you know go for it and i understand that like in this day and age it's kind of difficult to try to go for what you love but there's always going to be uncert uncertainty in like any kind of era that we live in there's always going to be uh doubts fears 
uh, the unknown. Uh, but, you know, as long as you're willing to put in the work, as long as you're willing to network, as long as you're willing to talk to people, not even like for like the, the wrestling stuff, like not even um, trying to gain access where you're not really helping the company. If you want to like, you know, do vlogs, backstage stuff, be a broadcaster, um, you know, do media press, you know, it's a lot more than that. Like if you go presenting that you go there as a fan just because you want something free, you're not really going to get the opportunities that, that other people have gotten. And you're probably going to be wondering, like, you know, I put in the effort, but yeah, you put in the effort, but then, you know, it, you still have to act pro professional in the setting. You know, um, we might think that it's all fun and games and everything, but it's really, really not. Um, it's more about being professional and that's just coming from, from me. Cause every time that I do uh, media press for MOW, I am there very professional. I am running around with a chicken without a head and like videotaping this, videotaping that, talking to the wrestlers, making sure that they're okay, uh, talking to um, the staff and see if they like need any extra help. If like, you know, everybody is like tied up, but I'm currently, you know, want to help and um, do what I want to do. Uh, and I go and help them if they if they need me, if they need me wherever, you know, they need me. But most of the time I am recording. I'm checking on wrestlers and I am basically um, checking on fans too to make sure they're OK. Uh, but for the most part, like I know this answer and this extra bit got a little like too winded, but it's just to go to show you that like good things happen when you put out the good energy into the world and you let negative comments roll off your shoulder and you go do what you love to go do. Um, and even if like it is very scary in order to do what you love to do, sometimes you got to take the risk. Sometimes you got to find alternatives uh, to bring in that, that income and whatnot. You know, you got to think smart, you know, the, the economy of like, streaming and income and stuff like that has changed and um if you learn how to play the game you'll be okay um but again you got to do what you love and um you know nobody can take away your effort nobody can because obviously they don't know you they don't pay your bills they don't like you know pay food for you or whatever they you know they can watch from the outside in, get upset at you, talk all this shit online, and let them keep talking while you go do what you got to do. All right, let, let's continue the, the interview. And if any of that made sense to you guys, for anyone that is out there lurking, please make sure to hit that like button right here on youtube.com forward slash square circle podcast because that helps the video, that helps the video get into the algorithm and we can have more people here and more people chatting. And if you agree with me, let me know in the chat. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Okay, hold on. I'm sorry, dude. I can't. <laughs> I can't. Hold on. CVV. Where did you even think that it was possible growing up? You know, born and raised in Puerto Rico, and then you, you. In New York, yeah. In New York, right? Where, where do you even think it's possible? It's wild. I just, it's one of those things since I was a little kid, I, I just, I believed that I was born to do something else, not not the norm. Like, I wasn't born to do a nine to five. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I, like, I just, Puerto Rican descent, like, no, New York Rican, right? New York Rican. New York Rican. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I, I just, We're teaching uh, like, Chris. There has to be something more for me, you know? Um, I, I just can't really play any more, like, ad since i'm like sponsored by uno and stuff like i can't risk it but um yeah i thought it was fighting but ufc was like starting basically yeah. it was still legal in most places yeah so like that wasn't a future um if it, who knows if ufc would have been like it is now right do you um, say fighting because you got in a lot of fights no but i did that too but no i used to train my father had a martial arts school he, so he was trained in traditional japanese martial arts um and then he had his own school and he trained uh, fighters um so and obviously i'm the son so i had to be the best one so he was the hardest on me um but so i thought that like, i was pretty good so i was like all right i'll do this but then there was, there was really nothing to do with it there's no money 
So after I was I got out of high school, I didn't I didn't want to go to school. Like this 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 is not what I'm gonna do with my life anyway. You know, that's the way I thought. And I just, you know, bounced around job to job. And then finally a buddy of mine from high school was like, Hey, we always talked about being wrestlers. Why don't we do it? And I told the story before, but it was one of those things that was funny because I, I had no idea. I didn't know what indies were. I knew WWF, WCW, and ECW. That's it. That's all that ever existed. And I, I would see Japanese wrestling in magazines and whatnot and, and you know, tape trading or whatever, but I didn't know indies. Hmm. And then he was like, but he was like, well, I was like, what do we do? Just show up to the garden when they're there and just say, hey, we want to wrestle? And like, that's exactly what you do. He was like, no, like anything else. <laughs> no, nah, you don't do that. You got to train. <laughs> you got to go to school. And we, then we found the Monster Factory in New Jersey. Man. And then where does it go from there? Because then it's still a, you know, a long <laughs> shot, right? Yeah. So at the time, uh, there's a system at the school at the time. It's different ownership now. But um, it was very, like, secluded. Like, it wasn't like, we'll train you, now go venture out. Do Hold on. Yeah, the frames are dropping. Okay. <laughs> I still, while I was training, had no idea what indies were. Uh, and, it, and it was basically basic training. You know, I just knew basic wrestling. Um, and I remember when they were going to run their first show in years, a like little indie thing at a, at a firehouse in Delaware. I remember them telling me, they're like, hey, we're, you're going to be on the show. In my head, I'm like, I made it. That's it. I'm, I'm wrestling at, at, at a stadium. You know, yeah. like, I don't know. Yeah. And they're like, uh, it's going to be at a, this firehouse. And I was like, damn, this has got to be a big firehouse. <laughs> Wait, hold up. You went to a wrestler and asked to do the CBB challenge. Are you talking about that you asked a wrestler to chop you, Aussie? Really? <laughs> you asked a wrestler to chop you? <laughs> <laughs> Did it happen? I don't I don't know why you would, man. I don't know why you would. <laughs> it was not. It was like 30 people. Uh no music, no nothing. I just walked out and I was just like, this is awkward. You know, just tights and no shirt on. Like, it's just so weird. Uh 20 times. <laughs> um but then afterwards I was like Oh man, that was cool. You know, just the adrenaline and everything. Uh, and then I fell more in love with it. And then little by little, I started learning, but I still stayed secluded in with the school and just doing their shows. And that's it. You, so nobody, aside from the same people every month, nobody else saw me. And this went on for years because I didn't know. Oh, wow. No, I didn't know any better. And then until I did. Who were the people that really inspired you when you were watching wrestling growing up? Uh, there, there's a lot, but the main one was The Undertaker. Mm. Uh, never been shy about that one. Like, that was my idol. Um, why? Have a funny thing. Uh, it's Undertaker and Kane for me that got me into uh, wrestling and realizing that there is a huge spectacle to wrestling, that there is a huge art form uh, to professional wrestling. So that's what me and Damien have in common. Undertaker. But by the way, you guys need to really stop labeling him as bisexual Undertaker. That's a little like creepy weird and like should not even happen at all like don't project your fantasies onto like somebody else like don't do that shit so let's not like call him bisexual undertaker stop it just treat him with, with respect this is damian priest treat him treat him with respect watching him and it wasn't even so much the wrestling. It was just the aura, the presentation, everything that I was like, I remember how I felt. And then that's when I, I knew, I was like, I need to make people feel this way. Mm. I want to be, because I was big into comics. I want to be a comic book superhero or supervillain by where people are that emotionally invested in me. Like, even as a little kid, I knew that. Maybe I couldn't articulate it that way, but I knew that. Um, and then, you know, obviously then I saw Razor Ramon who I legit thought was a Latino. You know, as a little kid, you don't know. The we all thought he was a Latino. Dad, I'm sure he knew, like, this guy was... <laughs> Listen, I, I even thought, you know, Razor Ramon was a Latino. Come to find out he's a white guy that played a Latino. And I was like, oh, 
all right can't say anything like i'll give that a pass the same way that like no one knew that tunga loa was camacho in wwe and like you know he got me i'll give him the pass to you know also be a latino so you know uh finding out razor ramon was a uh white guy because of scott hall and his real name and rest in peace to uh scott hall um you know so uh yeah you know i would always give him the pass does not even matter uh does that mean we have to stop saying mommy no 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 you can no no, no. uh with Rhea. You could definitely continue to call her mommy if she wants to be called that. I just think it's kind of weird and creepy to just automatically label Damian Priest as bisexual undertaker just because of the stuff that he wears. And like, I just think that's a projection. But if somebody wants you to call them mommy or daddy for stuff, uh, that's fine. I just think that, like I said, the bisexual undertaker thing is a little too far for me. And it's just like, respect the person. That's all fake accent you know but i didn't know i thought sure. it, I, I was like yo he's one of us you know um, <laughs> then as you get older you, you start you know you learn of other wrestlers sting was another one i loved sting um still do like just the character especially when he became the crow and i thought it was the coolest thing and then attitude ever obviously happened and i was in high school so you know austin rock were my favorites you know so obviously taker was always there yeah and then dx forget it you know and, and i was a brett fan and, and but then the nwo took over and then that was it for me you know nwo all the way uh but i so it's funny i would watch wcw just for the nwo and then that's it when they you weren't switch on back. yeah yeah <laughs> nwo and some of the the, the cruiserweights and then i would switch back that first hour like when nitro went to three hours and the first hour was cruiserweights yeah. i was locked in yeah yeah there were, i had some favorites there i was a big fan of obviously ray Malinko, Sikosi. So I, I was a huge fan of these guys. So yeah. and the stuff they did, Kidman, like I just thought it was so cool because nobody was doing that stuff. Yeah, you know, nobody. Um, the closest was ECW, and you could barely see it. Yeah, there were a lot of parts of your presentation that felt very much like the Undertaker. Like there's one where you're like you're kneeling in the ring, the lights on you, like <laughs> like that. That looks a lot like the Undertaker. Yeah, when when uh, they presented that to me, they're like, you're gonna play some mind games, you know. I remember Edge wasn't there that day, so this was like showing present a uh, representation of Edge just playing mind games with AJ, and they were like, you're gonna do this, and I was like, so I got powers. They're like, no, it's just you're just messing with them. It was like you got you. It's almost as if you planned this. I was like, all right. They were like, so kneel down. And so they're trying to explain to me. I was like, like the Undertaker. Like, yeah. I was like, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> he was already prepared for the assignment. Yeah, yeah. I got sucked out. Like they made it like that. There was like a sucking sound. <laughs> it's it it like the Undertaker. Yeah, I, when people see stuff like that, I know that some people that's not for everybody's taste. Uh, I love stuff like that. <laughs> I think it's the coolest thing because again, now it's like the, the comic book, which I was a fan of. So every once in a while, it's I like doing stuff like that because it's the little kid in me that enjoyed the, this side of the business. Do you remember the first time you met The Undertaker? Yeah. It was 1999 at an autograph signing in the Palisades Mall in New York, Rockland County, New York. Oh, man. That, was, that day I was, I was doing impressions. There were so many people. There was a little, long line. I was doing impressions of him, and everybody was trying. But I was like, you got to do it to him. And I was, I mean... Now was, you got to do it for us. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> but at the, at the time, as a kid, like, I, could, I could mimic his voice a little bit. and I would do the eyes. I was good at doing hmm. the eye rolls. And, and I, I had a trench coat on and his bandana. Like, I was decked out. And they're like, you got to do it to him, you know, like, do it for him. And then I got to, when I brought up to him, I choked. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was, damn, Damien. I, I, I watched wrestling because of you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> he, he was so nice, too, which blew me away. Seems legit. Yeah, checks out. Right? You're expecting like, him to set me on fire. I don't know. And especially at that time, he's in full character yeah. know, up until recently. And he was so, and that was the year where he was banged up and he had, he was leaving. And then he came back as the American badass. Mm. Um, so he was thinking about retiring. So that's what I said to him. I was like, please don't retire. And he was like, ah, stop, you know, like he was just cool. Um, and I, we got a picture shaking hands. I was, I was in my teens. Um, that was the first time I met him. And I, I won't forget that. I remember. Oh, in the scenes. And then I remember meeting him again at the, at the performance center. Yeah. So cool. fast forward to when you're signed with WWE and you meet him again, you know, what's that like? Yeah. I choked again. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was like, 
Hi, this is Abdul. You know, like I couldn't. Even, like, you know, like, <laughs> Damn, Damien. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, it was really funny. Like, and he used just just a cool man. What a cool dude. He's such a good person too. Yeah. I don't understand what's. And just. I, it's getting the outside about, stuff. Like yeah. he's like a, he legitimate badass <laughs> with swag. Like he just carries himself with so like, such a way that it's just it's cool. You know, like you see him and you're like, I want to be like that guy. Yeah. You know, and. I was like, I'm glad I looked up to him. Like yeah. he's everything I, I I thought he should be, and he was, and it was it was cool. And then he got to critique my matches, and oh my gosh, oh yeah. And uh, I went a different day. So the first time I met him at the PC, basically, Eddie, the referee Eddie, one of my best friends, this is the best thing. He texted me. He's here. Oh wow. Just, he's here. <laughs> I knew exactly what he meant. <laughs> He's I here. Home. I drove to the performance center just just to meet him. And then Bloom knows I'm a big Undertaker fan. Uh, is dying laughing. He goes, "You want to say hello?" I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he brings me over and of course embarrasses me. You know, in, in the introduction, they're like, "Hey, this is one of our fans." That's. <laughs> <I'm not bad." laughs> um, but then later on, like, I would go in, like, if I knew Taker was going to be in to work with, like, the big guys, even though, like, and when I mean big guys, it was, like, Omas, Labatunde, like, all these guys that are close to seven feet tall. So, like, yeah. I'm small compared to these guys. So, I wasn't even invited to the big man class. Um, uh, but I would go, and I would, like, if he was trying to demonstrate something, and since everybody else was newer, I, I would be like, yeah, do it to me. <laughs> you know, and I would bump or whatever, and just show. So, it was kind of cool that I got to work with him. You know, literally. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. Demonstrating stuff. I mean, he just beat me up, but it was yeah. as cool as beating him. You're in life. the ring with the Undertaker. It was so cool. And, he, and again, like I said, he was Danny, and he's even Danny. Like he was so good. <laughs> like everything. His explanations were very, very clear and, and understanding. But then just like his his punches and everything was so perfect. Uh, and I, I was just like, this is incredible. If you're wanting to burn some extra calories, or I'm sorry, bro. Old Spice. Ah, my God. Body wash. Vanilla and shade. 24-7 more. And the code CVV to save 15. Center, just during the COVID era. Um, I don't know. It, I, I can't even explain what happened that day. It was just something clicked, and I just let loose. And I remember getting to the back, and Sean and Hunter were waiting for me. And he was like, that's the guy I need to, I need to see from now on. There's no going back. That guy that was out there, that guy's money. Mm. Like, you have to be that guy, always. He would stop pretending. You know, and Hunter told me, and, he, and it's cool because Hunter told me, he gave me advice that I guess Taker had given him. And he goes, when Taker told me this once, when you learn how to just be yourself, you're going to make a lot of money in this business. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, I know, that's weird, because how the hell do you not know yourself? It's you. And sure enough, I was like, yeah, what the hell does that mean? And then I figured it out. It's just, we try to be a version of ourselves that we think everybody else expects, which is not you. You're still pretending. Uh, I think now is the closest to really me that you, you see, you know, especially with the Judgment Day and Rhea. Um, that's, you saw a different version of, of me, you know. Uh, and I like that I could show off different layers, like when I did work with Truth. You know, that, that just showed a different layer to me. Like, oh, I'm a normal person, you know, but yeah, you know, I'll kill you, you know. <laughs> um, but I, but yeah, going back, it was that moment with the match with Finn Balor. He just brought something else out of me. And then Finn and I became boys because after that match, because I was like, of course, oh, man, I'd love to do that again. And he was he was ecstatic about it. And he chose me because at the time, I think he was supposed to go into a program with Gunther. The pandemic happened. He couldn't they just couldn't work. And I think they asked him, like, well, who would you like to work with? And he picked me. Wow. And I'm grateful for it. The stuff with our truth is so good. <laughs> oh, Ronnie. Let's talk about our truth, man. Oh, our truth guy. is great. I mean, look, it goes without saying, at some point, we're going to have to team. Uh, like, we're going to have to <laughs> properly. The, the guy is unbelievable how talented 
of a performer. He actually, I can't even say he's a performer. That's him. Wow. <laughs> because we're in the locker room or backstage, just walking by off camera, and uh, like guy has me in tears sometimes laughing. It's unbelievable how funny he is, and just just his natural way of being. He's just a funny guy and a really lovable person. So everything you see on TV, that's that's real. That's why. And it's clear as day that I he broke me a few times. Yeah, it's, it, it seems like his goal is to get you to break. You know, when yeah. you're on camera. Yeah. I, I, of course I it is. Hunter also telling me, like, laughing. You know, he was, Hunter himself was laughing about it. He was like, you have the worst poker face when you're around truth. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I supposed to do, man? Uh, you know, like, he does it to everybody. It is yeah. what it is. Um, yeah, that, I really enjoyed working with him. And I, I almost feel like. That's like, true. It was like a, a different version of that comedy, you know, just bringing a different aspect and a different layer to the judgment day um or to me specifically i think carly carly does that a lot because like i react to stuff and then as soon as they're like okay and i just die and laughing and i'm like bro you are really funny you know I, I love working with carlito what's the one where truth got you the worst oh man that's there's a few but the one that always comes to mind is we were in the ring and I know he's, oh, he said something about it. I could see it in your eyes or something. <laughs> and I turned around because I was supposed to be serious. Like, I wanted to be serious in that moment for me. Yeah. Like, I wasn't told to, but I wanted to be serious. So I turned around to laugh, and the cameraman is right there on me. And that's what showed on TV was me laughing and then turning back around serious. <laughs> that's, that one always stands out to me just because it was in the ring. But there's a bunch of backstages that I just... Couldn't have it. Yeah, I couldn't help it. It is what it is. Yeah, I feel like you just have to go with it. Now feels so effortless. What's the work that you've put in on your promos over the last few years to make it feel so seamless? Before and after every, anytime I have to speak, uh, I'll go to somebody like specifically Heyman, and and he just constantly reminds me of like, where are you from? He goes, you from New York? And I'm like, yeah. He goes, why don't you talk New York? Oh, can't wait for that. Stuff, stuff like that. And then he'll take my delivery on stuff. And then he's always like, don't worry about, don't don't try to force remembering what you're going to say. Because then you, you lose yourself. Just yeah, that's true. You know, and um, feel what you're saying and react accordingly. He goes, you don't have to pretend. You don't have to go out there. And then I think just having that those things said to me over and over, now, when I go out, I'm not so much worrying about a script or what I plan on in my head to say. I just I know what I have to talk about and just talk and react, mm. you know, and, and I, I feel more comfortable. I, I really do. And I think he sounds you know, more comfortable, too. Right. Um, having people. What do you guys think? Learn, especially when we were all talking. So it's like conversational. It just having your friends there made it so much easier. You know, like they took pressure off for you, you know. In those backstage segments with the Judgment Day, your voice booms through, <laughs> right? <'Cause laughs> you have, you've got this, you know, deep voice, but it catches your attention, right? So if you're in another part of the room or if you're looking at your phone and they hear your voice, it's like, oh, damn. <laughs> That's true. Listen to this now. Yeah, it, it helps. <laughs> the voice definitely helps. Uh, in, in, with whether You got a deep ass voice. Standing out and drawing attention. It definitely does help. Um, Coming from a six foot five guy, it, it, it definitely it seems imposing. So uh, I'm glad I was blessed with the deep voice. You ever thought about doing voiceover work? <laughs> yeah, but it's one, I guess it's one of those things that, like what I learned when I was in, in you know, with my buddy when I was younger, with like, you got to go to school for something, right? Because I was like, well, how do you do that? You show up and you just be like, yeah, I can talk. I got a voice. <laughs> <laughs> no, you sure you have to go train for that too so, in some way. So, but uh, that'd be something, of course, once I'm done wrestling, why not? It's, probably a lot I would guess I would hope it's a lot less painful I would assume so <laughs> I would assume so yeah. yeah and that's something you can do till you're 100 years old too just talking yeah yeah and so th that's of course that's there you know I got the voice might as well you, I feel like you could be like the new James Earl Jones or you know it's like <laughs> Darth Vader's voice or you could just say what? this is CNN you know that's the big deep booming voice yeah, I, I, this, we got options. You've, you've got plenty. We of got options. options. Very, yeah. And I feel like uh, it, it just works so well with the promos that you cut. You know, you're big, you're tall, you're dark, you're intimidating. And you've got the voice, too. It, like, it all comes together. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, you work where you got. 
you know, and, you know, I've, I've been blessed with, like I said, like you said, the side and the voice. So um, I use it to my advantage, just like others before me did. You know, Scott Hall, Undertaker, these guys that had imposing voices and size. Yeah. And they used it. Yeah. Let's go to Backlash in uh, Puerto Rico. First of all, when it gets announced, what does that mean to you? It was when it became official, because what a lot of people don't know that there was back and forth that it almost didn't happen in Puerto Rico. Uh -huh. And plain and simple, I don't think we would have done the match if it wasn't in Puerto Rico. Like it was only we were only gonna do the match. If it was in Puerto Rico. So when they announced, you know, backlash in Puerto Rico, I was like, okay, this is real. This is happening. The island is getting some a little shout out. We get to represent, and it's and for me, it was always, of course, I'm very proud Puerto Rican. But it was can't hear the volume on the on the video. Well, hold on. Just represent representing the the Latin community, you know, all Hispanics. Uh, that to me was look opening the doors for a lot of stuff. And I'm not saying that Puerto Rico did, but look at how many PLEs were doing outside the immediate country. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I feel like the crowd reaction there was like, got the company excited for, man, let's see what else we can, they can do. Mm. Um, and so we were excited and thrilled for that representation. Obviously I was nervous in the idea of, this has gotta be really good. It's me versus Bad Bunny, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in a high profile match. This isn't just a typical celebrity match. They do two or three moves and it's high by, like we're, okay. we're gonna go 20 plus minutes have to um, get everybody emotionally invested into this. And it's more than just, again, just people clapping hands for a That should be good. People needed to feel sympathy, excitement, fear, you know, all of it. That's what you want. Um, so that, that there was nerves in that sense. By the way, Denisha, I think I pronounced it correctly. Uh, thank you for tuning in, even though you are... Oh, you just got home from work. I thought you were at work. But thank you for tuning in. I, I knew that the work was going to be put in on Bunny's side. Like, I, I did not worry about him not being ready. But you never know of how things are going to come play out, you know, so. That's a lot of confidence in you as well to be able to carry the majority of that match and make him look good. And I would think there had to have been a concern in the office too. Like, yes, there's confidence in me. But at the same time, there had to have been like, Oh, that we make the wrong decision here. The hats, there has to be. Mm -hmm. You know, clearly they did not make the wrong decision. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't think so either. I don't think they do either. But I'm sure beforehand, there, because there was talk of changing it to a tag match. Mm. That's uh, that'd be the easier way to do it to change it to tag at the same match. Time, Bad Bunny and I were very adamant. We were like, we don't want to do a tag match. Mm. Yeah, let's not and do that. I, I was proud of that one because. You know, obviously, I helped train Bad Bunny. Um, I pieced this match together the way I, I envisioned it, and he did as well. You know, like he, he had input and he had good, great ideas. And then I was very adamant about other representation. Like I wanted to use the LWO. I wanted, I requested Carlito and Savio. Maybe requested it under the guise of, you know, Bad Bunny thought it was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but uh, <laughs> uh, but they added so much, you know, for the, especially for the crowd. Like, it was yeah. a cool moment. Like, it, it wasn't a typical match. So it was like, well, then let's go all out. Yeah. If we're going to do it, let's go all out. Um, and it was great that everybody was receptive, you know, and they thought it was the, the right move. And clearly it was. I mean, every moment of that match was, I thought, was great. Uh, hands down, my favorite match just because of what it represented. Um, it was bigger than any win or loss yeah when you were standing in the ring and his music hits and it's one of the loudest reactions ever for an entrance what are you thinking oh my god that, like it, it was overwhelming like I, I and i've said this i never felt a ring like a uh, rumble or, or shake like not what the hell was that in my like headset whoa uh i found you from phil marks yeah um yeah, I, I've seen I've seen you be uh been a very, very awesome mod for Phil. Yeah. 
Uh, so I've, I've seen your name pop up, but I would like to say welcome to the family. Thank you for tuning in. Um, and you know, I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you saying that, um, I'm amazing and that I am, uh, good on podcasting. Um, I just love what I do and get passionate about it. And I want to say thank you for, uh, being here, um, and, uh, watching this together with us. Oh, you're standing in there. You know, because you, you don't, just don't feel it. I actually felt the mat shake um, during his entrance. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. And I even took a second to look around, you know, during his entrance, because it was just, a, it looked like a wild scene. Like it was a mixture of a concert with, I don't know, but like a Woodstock type of, I mean, it just, it was insane. Yeah, uh, I, it was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Yeah, um, goosebumps as you're talking about it. it's crazy. Uh, and then, yeah, and it's funny because the following year, obviously, I faced Jay in France at Backlash, yeah. and that entrance was insane. I feel like if you want to have the greatest entrance of your life, face me at Backlash. <laughs> 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 that's true. I Quick guess that's true. Blue Chew has. Oh my it. God! I'm sorry, Chris. Ah. Uh. I'm so sorry. Blue Chew for sponsoring the episode. Yeah, it was like uh, everybody, <laughs> every single person in the audience was singing his song. That was incredible. I mean, since then, now it, it's like common now. You yeah. see everybody does sing yeah. along. Nobody's right? saying Randy Orton's theme. And now, then now they do. Now everybody <laughs> sings it. Now I mean, they do. I'm sure it wasn't like... I'm sure some did, but not it, to the, the scale, just like Cody's song. Every, you know, people do the whoa, uh, yeah. and they sing along. But it wasn't the whole song. Yeah. It might be certain parts. Yeah. It's not 100% everybody. This was like a literally 100% the entire arena. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like that. Yeah. And, and I think a testament to you and a testament to the hard work that Bunny put in. The match was good. And whenever you put a celebrity in a match, you kind of go, ah, uh, I don't know could be fun but is it gonna be good yeah and right good. so congrats to both of you thank you thank you no and that was i great. enjoyed like, it it was both like we had fun um probably me more than him because he was in a lot of pain uh, a lot <laughs> Why, of what, pain. What, what hurt him the most <laughs> he's just not used to bumping everything that's, that's the thing it's like when we were training and it was one of those things i was like we got to train a little harder than we did the last time i was like because and i explained to him i was like i'm gonna hit you really hard i was like i have to this is one-on-one -on -one. I was like, it's a street fight. I was like, I need you to not hold back. Like, you're in a street fight for real. Give me all you got. I was like, I'm not going to give you all I got because I'll, you'll die, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, give, you, I'll give you a lot. <laughs> uh, and I did, and I gave it to him. And, you know, that was the one thing. I, like, you got to respect the guy that's not from this business. His body's not used to taking that much physical, you know, impact. And he kept on getting up, you know. Granted, he told me that it took him a few weeks to recover. A few weeks. He messaged me like three days after, and he was like, I finally feel good enough to walk around. Oh, like, damn. He was, he was like, I, I barely come out of my bedroom. Like, I've been in so much pain. He was like, I feel like I've been in a train wreck. Wow. Um, and I think the worst thing for him was one of the Kendall shots. And I, I only gave him one. He gave me like 20 of them. I gave him one shot. <laughs> but I did tell him, I was like, I'm only going to hit you once. Don't worry. And he goes, oh, okay. <laughs> you sure? I was like, yeah, You're I'm sure. sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, and was... I swung like a baseball bat. <laughs> then you you rode that momentum, I mean, really into Money in the Bank, right? So when did they tell you you're going to win Money in the Bank? Shortly after, it was like, you know, after that moment, great moment, great for the community, great for the island. But now what? Mm-hmm just lost to a celebrity at the end of the day, right? Like, okay, that was bigger than anyone lost, like I said, but the show continues. Sure. So now we, we got that business done, but now what happens to Damien Priest, the character on TV? Mm -hmm. um, so I had those questions and then, but I think I, I don't know if it was already the plan, but after that match, like they knew they could trust me like more than ever. Uh, Which is 100% true. Within a few weeks, but then it was with always that, that, that wording of, Things can change, yeah, yeah. but as of right now, the plan is. Hmm. Um, 
And I'm, you know, obviously fortunate that did plans did not. <laughs> did they tell you you're going to win? And then the idea is you're going to have this really cool WrestleMania moment. No, no. Every, that's one of those things like, we'll see what happens. Hmm. You know, I, I, um, when I won the briefcase, I wasn't sure if I was going to cash in that night. Hmm. Wow. You know, they, they don't tell you everything. I'm just, just putting that out there. I know people think that we know. No, they might. They might have a, pl- a long-term plan, which I, I know they did. Yeah. Um, but they don't really articulate it fully to you. Probably for the main re- also the reason of they don't want you to get, uh, you know, amped up and hyped. And then, yeah. uh, sorry, things change. Yeah. Then you're yeah. broken, you know, like, because that's not cool either. So I'm pretty we sure they, want they that. like to keep it, you know. But like, but when they do tell you, they tell you with, but you know things can change. So take it with a grain of salt type of thing. That WrestleMania moment was pretty incredible. Yeah. So before your music hits, you're standing backstage. What are you feeling? I, I just wasn't, I couldn't believe it was happening. You know, like that whole day, I didn't think, I, I knew that there was a possibility of things. They told me the day before that, look, things can change. We've seen things change. Yeah. Uh, we saw it at Money in the Bank when Brock won the briefcase. They came out out of nowhere. Yeah. Yep. You know, like, and that was a decision in that that day, apparently, wow. from what I hear. So, to me, I was like, "What if Brock's music hits?" You know, like I don't know, <laughs> yeah. uh, just anything, yeah. or, or at the last second, they're like, "Hey, don't cash in," you know, do something or whatever. Uh, I, I don't know, but I was, but then a part of me was like. I just go into business for myself, <laughs> <laughs> man. Um, no, no, but it, so like the whole day, I I was I didn't want to have the same conversation with the talent and and just everybody in the building. Of are you cashing in today? What are you doing here? So I stayed hidden for me, not because I, I didn't ask me just to hide. I stayed hidden for me just because I didn't want to have these conversations. Only like the Judgment Day and Roman because he saw me in the room. Uh, like very few people knew where I was all day. Um, and in, even still all day, I was just subtle. Uh, hey, Lucy, how's it going? Welcome to the stream. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, settle down because we don't know if this is actually going to happen till, the, till, it's, till it happens. Mm-hmm. And that's how I treated it. But then when I went up to Gorilla, right before the match started, then it was like, Oh boy, is this really gonna happen? Oh boy, <laughs> you know. Um, and then I'm sitting there just watching the match and watching, and I'm just trying to stay focused on the match and enjoy the match as a viewer to hold my nerves together. But when that bell rang, and I was like, "Oh, this is happening," and I look around, there's nobody telling me no. I was like, hmm. "Everybody's just, oh, everybody's relaxed. Nobody's coming up to me to be like, hey, don't change your plans.' Uh, All right, it's happening. I'm not to nobody not right now. <laughs> it's like it's over, and that music hit, and I was like. Oh, right before I ran out, all I was thinking about was I'm not going to sprint because God forbid I trip and fall. (laughs) I was like, I'm going to have a good stride, watch my steps, make sure I don't trip over the mat. I don't want to do the funny around the corner, you know, just comfortable. Yeah. Look cool. Forgot all about that as soon as the music hit. Just jetted down, went around, almost fell. Like around the corner. Thank God I didn't slip. I hit Drew so hard with that briefcase. And it went flying. I, I didn't even know where it was. It almost ended up in the, in the crowd. Can you imagine? There goes my cash in. The guys up in the crowd, somebody runs up with the briefcase. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I like I hit him and the it left and I didn't even know where it was. And then it landed in front of me after I took like five steps. And I was like, oh. <laughs> give it give it to Eddie to cash in. Uh but man, that was uh when he hit the three, I just felt so accomplished, like mission accomplished. Uh, wow. That, that, that was a cool one. And that's one of those that I, I took it in. I really, like, I was in tune. Like, as soon as the three hit, I was very in tune to what was happening. Like, I looked, like, I screamed. I looked at the crowd. I see her. And that was the other thing. The fact that they, the way they reacted. Of course, they're, they're more reacting because they're, everybody wants to see something special, yeah. something yeah. cool. It's not because they were cheering for me. I understood what it was, but it was still that that Philadelphia crowd made it ten times better than what I would have expected because of how they reacted and their energy. Uh, and it, they were hyped, and that of course now gets me going. Yeah. You know, so uh, 
I got to thank that crowd at WrestleMania for making it extra special. There's a lot of people that think like, oh, man, I'm 28. I'm way too old to do this. I'm 34. <laughs> I'm way too old to do this. You win your first world championship at 41. You're not too old for nothing. No. The world has changed. Like, when they say my age out loud, like you just did. like I'm it, the same it, age, so that's why I said it. Denisha, I appreciate that. I really don't have much mods. Uh, my awesome other mod uh, is Vortex. I still think she's a mod, but either way, like, my other best buddy is um is vortex but uh yeah uh i'll let you i'll let you know i'm still new into the world of like asking for mods and having mods uh just so you know uh so i'm, I'm just new to it uh <laughs> i do appreciate you and i also appreciate you uh helping out uh phil over on his channel as well so i don't want to overwhelm you but uh you know i appreciate it and i appreciate you saying that you're here for that i just want to let you know um this isn't this isn't a no just so you know it's not it's not a no it's just uh i'm still new to that <laughs> kind of thing <laughs> also um for everyone that is uh viewing and lurking i appreciate you guys and um i'm doing my own kind of like marketing because for some reason one of the main links is not really working if you guys don't know in addition to um uh, in addition to watching this and whatnot, we are sponsored by Uno, which uh, I really do love to play Uno. And we'll play Uno in a little bit right after this um, interview uh, video is done. Uh, we'll play some Uno. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so you could download it. That helps me out directly. That helps out the creator. If you guys ever want to know how to help out a creator directly, especially when, um, you know, uh, you're always like, okay, you know how you hear about, um, content creators don't really get a fair share of like the revenue share, especially when it comes to like subbing and stuff like that. And because this channel here, the square circle podcast is not in the YouTube partnership program. So I have to like get sponsorships and stuff like that to help out. So by downloading the Uno game, playing the game, reaching level 10 that helps me out directly as a content creator and a streamer and it's basically one of my favorite games to play and we'll play it together in a, in a little bit once this interview is done but i'm just letting you know that like content creators has a lot more options now um and there are a lot more ways to help your favorite content streamer creator in a very direct way and that's and that's one of the ways obviously liking liking the live stream sharing the live stream letting people know that we're live doing something cool that helps as well too it's the long game it's a marathon and not a sprint when you want to be a content creator but i'm just throwing it out there in chat the link is there if you want to download the game play uno with me and uh we'll start doing that in a little bit but that is how you can directly um really help out a create uh content creators by doing that and helping out with the sponsored stuff um aussie i appreciate you like always man reminds me wow i yeah. would never guess that it reminds me of like oh wow i i actually am that age but i don't think that way i don't feel that way yes um i feel the same way maybe it's maybe i'm because just because i'm immature i don't know <laughs> <laughs> that probably helps yeah it probably helps. It, that probably but, helps uh, I, like, I guess when people are like, well, how many more years do you think you can do this? And I'm like, I don't know, a lot. Yeah. I'm <laughs> fine. You know, and once I start getting stuff fixed, <laughs> I'll be even better. Yeah. So, like, I, I don't see any, like, I'm not going anywhere. But I think it's the idea there of, like, there's probably a point in your life when you're like, this isn't going to happen anymore. And I'm only going to keep getting older. Well, now you're at a point where it's like, well, I'm a world champion. Life's only going to keep getting better from here. It's got Pretty it. much. <laughs> like, that's, that's, right? that's exactly the way I'm thinking. You got to you know, go I, up I'm, and I'm not down. I'm not to do it. There's guys, old, guys old, way older than me that have been able to, to continuously have success in not just in wrestling, just in anything that they set their minds to. So I, I feel like I'm good. Like, I, I, I have a lot left, a lot left uh, in wrestling and just entertainment business as a whole. So I, I'm pretty confident that, yeah, like, to your point, I'm, I'm my, I feel, feel like my best years are still ahead. Who instilled this in you? Who instilled this mindset in you that you can accomplish anything? Like I said, I just, 
decided to think the opposite of what I used to. I love that. Um, Of course, you get advice from a lot of different people, family, friends, you know, people you look up to, idols. But ultimately, it's on you to make the decision of what you're going to do with yourself and your life. And I, I, uh, just the choice I made, I was like, if I truly believed since I was a kid that I was destined for more than just the average, then it's gotta be. And I gotta, I gotta be this way. I have to be this way. And I have to be not just confident, just positive and and willing to do what it takes. When you talk about life outside of wrestling, there was talk about you being in Black Panther too. (laughs) Yeah. What ended up happening there? <laughs> it's a long story, but uh, stuff happens. Basically, it got taken away from me, but not from Marvel. Did you have the role? Yeah. Oh wow. Oh. Because I know earlier on it was like you were reading for the role, you were auditioning for it, so you got the role. Yeah. And I think we can read between the lines here that yeah. you know the regime was a little bit different at that time. Exactly. Maybe you mm-hmm. need another Marvel opportunity. It'd be cool. I'm ready. I, no. I, feel, I feel like it <laughs> could no. happen now. Well, and it's funny because now I'm busier than ever. So, and I, look, come with me. I, I'm good with it. You know, maybe I do something like that. I go a different route and I'm not sitting here with you as the world champ, you know, like being a world champion. Like, That's I, true, I, yeah. I won a world championship at WrestleMania. Like, I don't know if that happens. Yeah. So, um, look, and I said this before, like, I, I, live a certain way now that i can't look in regret yeah. i can't think about stuff that didn't work out my way i gotta think about what's next and what else i can do positively for myself so yeah. it didn't work it didn't work out um not the end of the world the movie was great though <laughs> it was a great movie but you're right everything happens in life like if this thing doesn't happen then this thing doesn't happen and then maybe you're not you know seeing your money in the bank and then maybe you don't cash in at mania and then and then and then and all of that added up becomes the person who's sitting here in front of me right now. There's no reason to live in regret. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Um, That's especially true. when there's so much positive to come. Yeah. Like you, we don't know. Yeah. So there's no point of being miserable over something that did or didn't, but it's, you know, you can't go back in time. At least not yet. <laughs> so yeah. um, maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> Tell us something about Rhea Ripley that we might not know. Oh. She's a cornball. I mean, I pretty much, I think we've in different, whether it's interviews or in the ring or just social media, we pretty much, we're out there of how we are and, and, you know, what people know about us. Um, She's my favorite person. Like she really is. That's, that's my homie, ride or die. Like, uh, love her to death you know it's nothing i wouldn't do for her um but yeah she's corny as hell sometimes she was wearing when we interviewed her yesterday she was wearing like these nine inch ridiculous yes these spiky boots I, she sent me a video that the fans were taking yes the, the walking down the ramp yes yeah yeah, yeah. holding onto my shoulder she was like i'm not gonna make it and i was like hold on <laughs> what's funny is her wearing those heels she's almost as tall as you which i was like what's wrong with you and, and like all they like Hunter Caesar, and he's like, of course. <laughs> then he, he also told a funny story from NXT. He was like, it was almost like a competition between, between her and Raquel of who can seem taller. He was like, I would do these interviews and stuff. I'll stand next to them, and I'm just <laughs> looking at, at, at Raquel and Rhea. <laughs> and I started laughing because I do remember those days that they they were like doing it as almost like a rib to each other to see who could. Oh be my taller. god! Yeah. So they would wear these ridiculous platforms, and they're like six four, six five. <laughs> Makes no sense, man. And she's already. I don't understand. Very tall. Yeah, exactly. So this is not necessary. Yeah. Not necessary. So listen, I just want to quickly talk about um, fashion statements. Uh, I am not the most like fashionable person, and I wear, uh, you know, whatever I want to wear, and I feel comfortable with it. The only time you guys will ever catch me in like a heel uh, shoe form uh, would have to be like a sneaker wedge. Like, that's the only thing that I can walk in is a sneaker wedge. And I love sneaker wedges. Um, I still have, like, only one pair of sneaker wedges. And that's from uh, Skechers. Because uh, I do end up buying Skechers sneakers. Or anything that's, like, on sale for, like, 20 bucks that can last forever. Like, I don't really shop name brand anymore. I used to. 
Uh, but after a while, I was just like, that's that's like way too expensive. It makes no sense. Um, but I now buy stuff that like I feel comfortable in. Um, but I would just get myself, you know, some sneaker wedges, um, some sweatpants, maybe, uh, maybe some really good uh, leggings, depending on how they look, um, T-shirts, um, graphic tees. Uh, if I need to buy something that like makes me look cute for dressing up for an occasion, sure. But um, yeah, I'm not wearing no nine inch heels. Like, I don't know how you ladies do that shit. I really don't know how you guys can uh, run around on heels on very like skinny stilettos. And I don't know how female wrestlers end up going into the ring and, um, you know, fighting with those on. And I'm just like, you could break your ankle, you know? Um, I'm more for being comfortable and plus anyway, I've always been a tomboy my whole entire life. So like I go with the most comfortable thing there is in the world, which is like sneakers, um, sweatpants, uh, jeans, a t-shirt, uh, a hoodie, you know, anything that's like comfortable and like snuggable and, you know, comfort. Basically, um, I don't really get dressed up unless like I need to get dressed up. Uh, for the most part, I do like efficient kind of stuff. Uh, yes, yeah, so I don't know how I don't know how they end, ended up like doing that kind of stuff. Like, how do you guys walk around on these fucking heels, man? I I don't I don't get it. I really don't. Uh, but not to say that like you shouldn't or you can't. You could do whatever you want. You could dress up however you want. But to me, when I see it, I'm just like I I don't understand. You guys have like far more power beyond me to do that. And I think that, you know, you guys have a better engagement on like your core, meaning like your stomach area, like your core area. And I also think that like you guys just tell gravity to, you know, F off <laughs> and that, you know, you'll just be the the cute one going down, whatever, and wearing these big ass heels. But um I just want to say that, like, I like to be comfortable in, like, what I wear. But I will wear uh, sneaker wedges because they are cute. Um, I haven't worn my sneaker wedges in years. So if I were to try to do it, my whole calves, my calves will lock up because I haven't worn that. But that's, like, the closest thing to get me into, like, heels to be a girly girl. Like, I'm not a girly girl. I am one of those tomboys that, you know, like to play rough and tough. Um, basically that's, that's what it is. <laughs> Where do you see things going from here? Like life is pretty great. If you're Damien Priest right now, how does it continue to keep going up? It's one of those things that I don't know what it is, but there's gotta be more. And I'm just going to keep striving for more, you know, obviously I've accomplished some goals, but there's still more. Like I, I want to have, I want to be in the hall of fame. So I, I got a lot of work to do. I, like I said, I've only been in the main roster for three years. I feel like I need a, a few more and a few more at a high level. Mm. Um, I need just more moments I, 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 uh, for me to, to enjoy with my friends and family. You know, I, there's a lot more to Damian Priest to go that I need to happen so that when I actually am done, I can be like, man, I did everything. Mm. You know, and I, I haven't done everything yet. So yeah. that I want, I want to do it all. I want to work with everybody. I yeah. want to have every moment possible. You know, I every... feel like that too. You used to do hit the lights as your finisher. What was the conversation of like that? Looks a lot like the crossroads. Cody's coming back. You can't use that anymore. That was pretty much the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they, they didn't say you can't do it anymore. It, it was like a conversation of. Look, obviously it's a similar move. It's different, but it's still similar. Like I do it differently, but it's one of those things. They're like, you might want to, but they never said change it. Mm -hmm. And even Cody was like, you didn't have to change it. I was like, yeah, but if you come back and I'm doing this move, every time I hit it, people are going to think of you. But who had it first? Mm. Actually, I don't know the answer. Uh, I mean, Tess did it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it's a, that's also I don't, similar to I don't even remember. Like Skipper used to do that. He looks good. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, that's similar. Similar, right? Kind of. I mean, thinking of Steiner did it. 
Okay, all right. The, it, the, the move's been done. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a rolling cutter. Yeah, variations. Oh, the it. rolling yeah. cutter, so, okay. Um, and he has his own twist, the way he hooks the arms and twists back yeah. and forth. I would do it more with, you know, taking my arm out and spinning underneath. But it's at the end of the day, it's a rolling cutter, right? Yeah. So, um, and I was okay with it, you know. So basically, anytime I face Cody, I'm going to hit him with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's, look, it's a move. It's not that serious. Like, I think, Everybody else thinks of it more serious than we do. I really didn't care. Uh, like I was like, okay, I'll just go back to using the South of Heaven or razors or, or the the flatliner that I do. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. Yeah, you're like, I've got a lot of moves. Yeah, and I haven't even started doing submissions yet. <laughs> oh, uh oh. Uh, so, which I got a few. Um, but that's yeah. a page right out of the Undertaker's book. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and I have a different version of a Google Plata. So, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but no, but there's it, that's what I mean. Like there, there's there's a lot of stuff that we can do. Like I, I wasn't I wasn't mad. I wasn't upset. Like I knew, it and I, I just didn't want people to think of him every time I did a move. You know what I mean? Like that's true. You don't really want that. Homage to somebody is one thing. Doing a similar move to somebody who works somewhere else, but when they're working in the same company, on the same show, yeah, it's <clears throat> all right. You know, there's got to be a difference. When you premiered the documentary at, at SummerSlam, what was it like watching it with that audience? Odd. Uh, it was, although I was behind a curtain watching, uh, it was very uncomfortable. I remember Punk was sitting right next to me, and I would pretend to be on my phone sometimes just because I was feeling uncomfortable with certain scenes. Um, just whether I was speaking or somebody in my family was speaking, and it was emotional parts, I would... Just pretend like I was not paying attention just because I needed to distract myself. And it was because it just it was a weird feeling of seeing something about you around a, a theater full of people and then around some friends. It was just it's not something you're used to. Mm. Um, but Punk was super cool with it. He was like, dude, this is so good. You know, he was like, don't feel embarrassed. And I'm like, bro, this is weird. You know, but it, it was odd. But also I was proud because. Because at the end of it, like, I, it kind of reminds you of your whole journey because it's not something you think about all the time. Like I, like I said, I think forward all the time, like to, today, tomorrow, next month. Like I'm looking ahead, not necessarily just constantly thinking about what I've been through. Yeah. This was like a crazy reminder, even though I did a sit down interview about it. But as soon as I was done talking, it was all right, go about your day. Mm -hmm. This was different sitting there and watching it and then watching clips and pictures and having your family talk about it you know i don't really talk to my family about that stuff so it was a lot it was heavy um but i was proud at the end of it and then the the reaction to everybody was it was pretty neat how did it how did it even get pitched to you that they wanted to do a documentary so i went to connecticut to the headquarters for like some other interviews i think i went to do the bump and uh, do some other content and then I was just telling stories. And then when I was done, one of the producers came up to me and he's like, I'm not sure if we're going to use this. He uh, goes, but I'm going to show this to some of the execs. And I think this is going to develop into something more. I didn't even know what he meant by that. I was like, okay, yeah. like what? Oh, all right, whatever. He had me come out here, just talk for an hour, and then you're like, <laughs> like for nothing. Yeah. But I didn't realize what it was. Uh, and then they came back. They're like, remember when we told you? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, okay, so we want to do a documentary on you. And I immediately said, no. Oh. Like, ah, no, no way. No shot. No. I was like, to show my like my personal side, like my personal life, I, I show glimpses. Yeah. Like I've talked a little bit about it. It's very, you know, sporadic, like once in a while on the social media, I'll post something. But they don't do personal life too much. I'm Damien Priest. Damien Priest is completely different. Mm. Um, but then they convinced me with the idea of maybe. Forced to go rogue, hunted from within. This is Call of Duty. Black what? How do we, how do we get a Call of Duty? Oh my God. Black I can't even skip this. Pre-order now. Well, for all of my gamers out there that, uh, for mature. like Call of Duty. Before Shopify, were you wondering oh my God. sales at? But now I can't skip this. Shopify, you're easily selling online in person. I swear, man. Discover how millions of entrepreneurs use Shopify to ignite their selling. Sign up for a one dollar per month trial period at shopifycom slash YouTube audio. Yeah, Priest is super cool, so man. Like, I would love to be friends with with Priest, man. I would love to be friends with him. 
who's in a similar spot that you were in can s listen to your words and see your journey and it could change their life. Yeah. The moment they said they were to me that way, I was like, oh, yeah, fine. Like, of course, I, like if I can inspire, like, and that was the thing, if I can inspire one person, just one, um, to change something for the better for themselves, it was worth doing it. I feel like in that promo that you did with Gunther, there, there, that inspired a lot of people. He's talking about your upbringing, you know, and maybe it wasn't as good as his. And I think. Hey, Scully, what's up? Cool. Yeah, I, I realized that. I realized it, it was you, the, the We Want Hendry uh, guy. Um, welcome to the stream, man. Welcome to uh, tuning in and watching me react to Damian Priest's uh, interview. Um, I couldn't remember your name when I was doing the uh, Twitter space. Uh, when I was giving a shout out to everybody, I just remember like the hashtag we want Hendry. So thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. I think there's a lot of people that see a truth in that and go, man, the way I grew up, maybe it wasn't that great. Damien Priest is my guy. That's the thing. And that's, that's why I was okay with it. Once it got worded in a certain way and explained, yeah, because people can relate. You know, yeah. there, there's, there's a lot more people struggling than there are people that are sad. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's just the unfortunate reality of the world. So, but I am one of those not supposed to. So if I'm here, I'm sitting here with you talking about this right now. Mm. Why should anybody else? It's possible. It's all on us. Gunther really went in on you on that promo. Yeah. It wasn't very nice at all. And, and I really went in on that right hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you see the way he dropped, like that, there's no phoniness in that. Um, to be fair, I may have told him to say that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it's okay. Still hot when you hear somebody else say yeah. it, <laughs> uh, it makes a lot more sense no, now. No, I, but it was, especially with the amount of time that we had to put in to make our match of SummerSlam worth, you know, people's interest. We needed to get personal fast and make it intense. And I think we accomplished that. Yeah. What's a Gunther Chop feel like? I, I can't even, there's, there's no explanation. There's nothing you can compare it to. Um, I don't grab a frying pan and have somebody swinging as hard as they can against your chest. Um, Damn. Like, they, and it's him, Drew, like these guys, just with these heavy hands. Just ginormous <laughs> people. And they perfected the art of slapping. Which is crazy. <laughs> right. It's ridiculous. Um, it's brutal. I mean, you see how you've seen it. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like there's no other word for it. It sucks. <laughs> I, I hate being marked up like that for like and it doesn't go away right away. You just mark no, up of course not. Take a shower, it hurts. Take a deep breath, it hurts. You put on a t shirt, it hurts. Like it all hurts. Yeah. So yeah, not fun. Was it your idea to rebrand the Money in the Bank briefcase? Yeah. To make it senior Money in the Bank? Yeah. It's great because it, you know, it, everybody knows your your heritage, but now it's in front of your face. It's like, okay, we see it. Yeah. What after a few failed cash ins, I was like, it doesn't seem like I'm cashing in anytime soon. <laughs> so I went and I was like, hey, got an idea. Uh, it's like getting shot by a giant ham. Oh, damn. Uh, Priest is one of them guys in that Drew Seamus Gunther class. Do you mean because of like his size and like how heavy, uh, how much of a heavy hit, uh, hitter he is when, uh, when you uh, say that? Uh, which, by the way, I'm going to pause here for just a quick second. Uh, for anyone that is new and tuning into the stream, and if you are lurking, uh, please make sure to hit that like button right here on YouTube.com forward slash uh, Square Circle Podcast. Uh, because the more likes that we get, it goes into the algorithm of YouTube. It goes into the atmosphere of YouTube. And that's how we can grow and connect uh, and network with a lot more other people on YouTube um, and grow our community because it is an us thing. It is not just an I thing. It is an us thing. And uh, thank you guys for giving uh, your friendship 
over to the stream by us having 529 followers and even tuning into this stream as well and hearing me talk about the interview and pausing and giving my thoughts and i welcome everybody that's here in chat the other thing i want to mention too is that we are sponsored by uno as you can uh tell let me see if i'm pointing to it right no right right up here i could do one of these <laughs> uh, we are sponsored by uno which is amazing i love uno i love playing the card game it is currently on mobile um in the chat the link my special link for uno is going around please make sure you download it play the game crush those goals we're gonna play it right after this interview uh and then uh we're gonna have some fun with that um, if you guys ever wanted to know how to directly support your favorite content creator, that is one of the one of the special ways. Uh, currently, right now, the Square Circle Podcast is not in the YouTube Partnership Program. We are getting there, and I am so thankful for meeting everybody. I'm so thankful for people coming by, hanging out, and talking about wrestling, watching wrestling, watching the videos, and giving everything so much love. Like without this, it wouldn't be possible, and without you guys, it wouldn't be possible. So if you want to help me out directly. Uh, that is one way by doing it, by uh, clicking the link, downloading the game, playing up to level 10 and helping me out directly as the content creator and streamer for the Square Circle podcast. And I just want to say thank you guys. Love you guys. And uh, yeah, it'll be throughout the uh, chat. Um, yeah, Scully is definitely right. The heavy hitting uh, stiff guys. Um, and I presented it as merch <laughs> and they were like great idea <laughs> <You know? laughs> i was like you do a custom and i was like and i want to be called senor you know like throw a little <laughs> little difference like did everybody that's had uh different briefcases had like a a, a thing to it you know Edge with the, the rated r rvd with his you know like there was different ones mm -hmm. i was like i want to be senor you know it's the first one that's completely different and that's why you're always trying to be different right and I was like, we'll do purple, obviously, the judgment day. And then they made a mock of it, and I, they showed me, and I was like, yeah, that works. That looks cool. Um, and I loved it. Um, and I'm glad I was able to hold it for so long now, in yeah. retrospect, because I had a cool briefcase that I was able to hold for so long. It also came from the idea, it looked like I was carrying around a giant lunchbox around the airports. It was embarrassing. So that's really why I wanted to change it. And it becomes your carry-on luggage, right? Yeah. Like it becomes your personal item when you board a plane? Yes. Uh, so a lot of times I would put it in my, I would check a bag just so I could put it in my check-in. Gotcha. Um, even though I didn't need a check-in bag, but I would just. But, but now you got to wait for luggage, on, you know, when you land in the city. I, I yeah, feel like yeah, nothing but, worse but than that. The purple one, it was a little easier. And then it was, you know. When you're taking a Money in the Bank briefcase through the TSA check-in, when you don't check it. Oh, man. like, what? money in the bank what what is this yeah first of all it's the funniest thing is always like you got money in there i'm like it literally says in the bank <laughs> <laughs> it literally says in the bank <laughs> but okay let's, let's let let's let that one go <laughs> and then uh like some would be like money in the bank manifesting that's good good for you that's like, good you're that's like just, well actually kind of that's exactly what i'm doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> but then is it empty on the inside just a contract but I would put I would put my toiletries. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, like, like I wouldn't put, put my dirty stuff because that was a complaint that they told me from, from the get go. They're like, "Hey, don't be like previous holders that they would put their dirty stuff in here and then just ruin these briefcases." I was like, no, "I'm good. Don't worry." Like, I would just put like literally like stuff like that, like toiletries, or take my gear to a show in them. Um, but. Yeah, yeah, I used it. Like I legitimately used like a brief, a real briefcase. Just I didn't have like paperwork, so yeah. I would have to use other stuff. So. You just have the contract in there. my sunglasses and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> That's so funny. Your story is really inspiring, and I'm sure you heard this when you aired the documentary. But there's something about that that people can relate to, and just the whole idea through this whole conversation we've had of like, if you can believe that it's true, if you can believe that you can do it, if you work hard enough, mm -hmm. you can accomplish it. You can, and worst case scenario, you don't. It's still a great scenario because you would have experienced so many cool things on the ride. Yeah, you're in a much better place than you would have been if you just gave up and didn't try at all. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Congratulations on everything, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you making the time here. I'm going to hit you with the question that I end every conversation with because gratitude's so important to me. What are three things that you're grateful for 
as we sit here right now? The number one thing is able to help my family. You know, I wasn't in that position before, so I am extremely grateful for that. I am grateful for the fact that I've changed my life around and I, I live positively and I'm mentally healthy. And I'm grateful for the fact that my story can inspire others to do the same for themselves. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Pleasure. Awesome, Thank awesome. You. This video is sponsored by Inc. Okay, well. Let me just make, let me, let me just, uh, basically that was the end of the interview and it was a fantastic interview. Chris Van Vliet did an amazing job. Damien Priest did an amazing job. And I really do want to become Damien Priest's friend. I don't know how we're going to make that happen, but like, I would love to become his friend. Um, just because it is sort of inspiring. Um, his journey is inspiring. Um, you know, I can relate because I'm half Puerto Rican. You know, he's full Puerto Rican. Um, and sometimes, you know, um, shit just happens in life. Uh, and not everyone makes it to like their dream and whatnot. And then sometimes you think that maybe your dream is too far away. And then sometimes you, your head, uh, the headspace that you're in, just basically like you are your own worst enemy. Sometimes, you know, you got to let that go and you got to start thinking a lot more positive, reaching out to people, networking with people, talking with people. Um, if you really want to do the thing that you want to do and the stuff that, you know, you love to do. Um, and I think that is a lot of great um, gems uh, hidden in the um, interview that we just saw. Uh, which I am grateful for having everybody here watch it with me and chat with me and give their thoughts and stuff like that. Um, and uh, I really do appreciate you guys. I appreciate Damien Priest for taking the time to talk with uh, Chris Van Vliet and Chris Van Vliet doing this on a very consistent, grindy basis. Um, other than that, I am very, very thankful for everyone that has given a like to this live stream. Um, if you have not given it a like and, um, you're just lurking, please give it a like. It helps out in the algorithm. And if you have not downloaded the Uno game, which we're going to be switching over to in, a, in just a little bit, um, if you have not downloaded the Uno game and, um, played, uh, please go do so. Um, this isn't the end of the stream. It's just that I want to, uh, switch over all of my stuff completely. Uh, but I will say that I feel like, um, streaming tomorrow as well. Um, probably around the same time to have an early stream so that way I can get, you know, my chores done later on and whatnot. But, um, thank you, Vortex. Um, hopefully like, you know uno you know is is amazing uh what i do want to do is that i'm going to put this image up here first and you guys are just going to hear me talk uh so my buddy adam bernard from uh the foundation radio uh podcast uh, basically I asked him permission if we can react to Arn Anderson interview because he uh, got the interview with Arn Anderson. I am a huge like Arn Anderson fan, uh, Four Horsemen fan, and like when I saw that I immediately I immediately started cheesing. So um, we're gonna be watching that tomorrow uh, because I got the okay because I asked ahead of time. Um, I'm not going to overload everybody here uh, with watching so many interviews. Uh, but if you want to tune in around the same time, like that 12 p.m., 12:30 ish, I know it's lunchtime, um, but uh, you know, I I just feel I have this thing about streaming like early into like brunch into like a little bit into the afternoon and then later on in the night if i'm not on a panel with somebody else then like you know that's the only reason why i like to stream a little bit earlier and stuff um but yeah tomorrow it's going to be that so tune in for that um found uh foundation foundation radio i can speak ladies and gentlemen i know i can uh, Foundation Radio by Adam. We're going to be reacting to the Arn Anderson interview. And then I guess I'll be talking a little bit about MLW because I did get the chance to watch um, Brock Anderson uh, in action. And man, I just love that we're bringing back like an old school style of wrestling, the technical style of wrestling. And that's what I like really, really love. Um, I love breaking down matches that are technical. 
Um, I do think that wrestlers should have like, you know, the full package and being adaptable in the ring. And they shouldn't just do like a spot fest after a spot fest after a spot fest. That's why sometimes the indie mindset doesn't really go over very, very well when it comes to like a weekly television show. Because like if you get, you know, all your stuff in, right, what else are you going to do during the match? You can't do anything during the match and then it's going to be on repetition. And then it's like, yo, you just hit a Canadian destroyer like three seconds ago. Why are you trying to hit another Canadian destroyer? Like, you know, at this very moment, like, what's the point of that? You know? Um, so I appreciate the technical style. Um, if you are new here, I, I, I adore the technical style of wrestling, but like if you have the full package, you know, show me the full package become adaptable you know don't just do the same stuff over and over again even though wwe has their wrestlers do that to basically save their move set so that way they don't get injured because they are wrestling you know 365 days a year 366 on you know on a leap year um, even though people could take like time off, but that's not the point. The point is that like, they don't want them to burn out through anything else. But sometimes if you have a good person that can, uh, book a match that can talk about the match and like, well, I'm not talking about like commentators, but I mean, talk about the match beforehand to know what you're going to be doing and what you're not going to be doing. If you plan the match accordingly, like it should be a very good feel good time of a match. Um, but if you're just going to try to get all your moves in, do all the high spots, do all the super kicks, you know, do all the Canadian destroyers, like it's not, it's not going to go over well. Anyway, I'm getting on a tangent. Um, that's because I love this business so, 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 so much. But yes, we are going to go over, uh, we're going to react to Arn Anderson's interview tomorrow. And we are going to talk about MOW and like, you know, what I did during MOW, uh, the videos that I have saved on my phone. And uh, we're going to do a hybrid um, and also, again, play some more Uno. Um, I'm only saying this uh, for this because I'm going to end the stream just on the Damian Priest interview. And then I hope that you guys stay around and we can start playing a little bit of the Uno game um, and have a good time like that and play for a little bit longer. Um, so I will see you guys in a little bit. Uh, don't go anywhere. But um, this particular stream is ending. I'll boot it back up. Uh, but I want to say thank you guys for tuning into the Damien Priest um, live stream. Um, if you guys did not see anything at all, like if you just tuned in late, uh, go back and watch it. It's fantastic. I even give some more gems and encouragement because I think that, um, you know, not a lot of encouragement is out there, especially for like content creators that want to get into the space. Or, you know, if you're thinking about starting this, if you're thinking about starting that, if you're thinking about going on uh, your dream job and your journey, um, you know, you can do it. You can definitely, definitely, definitely do it. It's just a matter of, um, just know that you're going to have some low periods and just know that you're going to have some really high periods. You're going to have some milestones. You're going to have some obstacles and like they all get you prepared for the doors of opportunities that will open for you. But on the flip side, you also have to be professional about what you want to do, how you want to handle situations and picking and choosing your battles. Um, maybe one day I could just have a live stream of just chatting to people about like, you know, stuff on the internet. Um, things that I've learned and um, how to handle them. There's no one, there is no one right way to handle it, but I've always wanted to do like a Q and a with uh, people that end up watching me and stuff like that and talking with Chad and like, you guys know that like, whatever you want to do, you can go do it. And even though right now it is a very difficult time, uh, maybe you never know what can happen. You never know. Um, the world that like the world of the internet is always constantly changing there's always different ways to get what you want and um to do what you want and love and love what you do it's just a matter of uh how you go about it you know um if you cut corners you're gonna end up you know being at the bottom and you're not gonna know how to go through that trench um versus someone that goes through the trench and go and get over all the little obstacles and celebrate all the little milestones. And then if they have a setback, they know how to get right back on track. 
for someone that doesn't cut corners. For those that do cut corners, oh, man, it's going to be way, 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 way more difficult for you to get back up on that horse, so to speak. Um, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, checking out the, well, me reacting to Damian Priest interview by, C by CVV. Tomorrow we are reacting to Arn Anderson interview from my buddy Adam. Um, and then we're going to continue a little bit later to play some Uno. But by all means, hit that like button. Follow the channel Square Circle Podcast on YouTube. Um, and I will see you guys on the next stream.